Today, we're winterizing the Suzuki. This is the 9.9, it's a 2020 model year. It's the fuel injected, and 9, 9, 15, and 20 Suzuki are the same, especially in this lean burn EFI twin cylinder. I love these motors. They're a little twin cylinder, a little bit tinny sound to them, but if you're idling around the lake on a small no wake lake like this one does, this is an awesome motor. It comes with a high thrust prop in the 9.9. So great for a pontoon. We're actually winterizing this one and a 20 horse, which is the exact same motor. So the process is the same, the parts are the same. I'm gonna take you through the 9.9, but know that a 9.9, 15 and 20 Suzuki are the same, especially in this lean burn EFI twin cylinder. So you can follow these same instructions to work on yours, whether it's on a pontoon, fishing boat, whatever, short shaft, long shaft, remote tiller, they're all the same, 9, 9, 15, and 20 for these motors. First step, we added some fuel stabilizer. This is a Mercury product. It lasts a long time, there's 12 ounces, and I put maybe an ounce, probably not even, there's probably about a gallon and a half of gas in there. Typically it's an ounce to you know four or five gallons. So not a big deal. It's not gonna hurt it to have a little extra in there. Still gonna fire just fine. We've mixed the gas in there. We shook it up real well. I need to let this thing run for probably 15 minutes. The best case would be add your fuel stabilizer the last trip around the lake, run it for a couple hours, make sure you've got a good amount of gas in the, in the motor itself that's stabilized and you're good. I didn't have that option. So I'm gonna run it now on the hose outside here for a good 15 minutes, 20 minutes, we'll rev it up and let it run, try to get that fuel going in. Nice quiet little motor. Obviously you hear the exhaust coming out, but when I'm running on the hose, I'm just making sure I'm getting water pumping out the telltale. Sometimes that'll be weak on the hose, just depends on the motor. It looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and rev it up a little bit once it's warm and we'll try to burn some fuel through it. Seriously, guys, I wasn't joking around. 20, 99, same motor. We'll pop the hood, we'll show you. Everything I'm gonna do on these two motors is gonna be the exact same. So really nice having them both here. I get to show you on both how the process goes. Uh, but our, we've run them both on stabilized fuel. So to get at our oil filter when we have to replace, first thing we're gonna do is remove this gasket this is just on the bottom. I'm just going to lift it up and kind of hang it on the motor. It's just one piece. You could set it off to the side if you want. I'll just get it out of here. Um, we'll need to put that back on when we're done, but that's going to allow me to pull my side cowls off so I can get at the filter. I have to get at this little bugger back here. That's actually where the oil filter goes. It's crazy, it's a lot of work to get at. Uh, <clears throat> no comment as to how I feel about Suzuki's engineering here. Motor's great, just those one of those little things that's kind of a inconvenience if you're doing this yourself, but that's why this motor is expensive if you're having a dealer do the service on it. There's a little release right here that you can pinch and that will help it slide right off of this block so pinch slide off we're unhooked what i have to get at so why this is such a pain in the neck is this cover right here so there's three bolts are holding in place probably have to pull our fuel filter out of the way let that hang so we can get at it no big deal nothing hurt there uh, but that'll allow me to release this. So first thing, before I get to that, I'm gonna go ahead and drain my oil from the crankcase, and then we'll drain the lower unit as well. Before you wanna mess with us, so we're back on the 20 horse now. We're just doing this all one step at a time on both motors, so following along the same way. Uh, I'm gonna pull this plug, it's a big eight millimeter Allen wrench. I'm gonna pull that, that's gonna allow the crankcase oil to drain. Do all that before you touch 
that cover up here where your uh, oil filter is. Gonna get a little projectile at first, that's why I have this up here. There is a little ring on there, just a little seal. So I'll make sure you don't lose that. And the nice thing about, I just ran this motor a few minutes ago. The nice thing about it is that oil is still warm. The stuff that got in my hand is nice and warm. So it's gonna drain way, way faster. Just like that, we're pretty well drained down. I could tilt this up and drain a little more, but generally letting it drain for an extra minute or two here, it's gonna take care of everything. Well, don't lose that oil plug. We'll set that aside for now. You'd make a little less mess if you had the motor tilted up just slightly and turned so that the oil could go straight down in. But we're just gonna let it continue to drain for a minute. We'll clean all that up. And while I'm doing that, I'll go ahead and drain this other one too. Ah, gotta get some paper towel. Get it, Marty. These motors only take, I think it's only about a liter of oil. The, we'll look at the capacity in a minute here, but it's not a ton of oil. So a lot easier, a lot less messy uh, dealing with it versus our bigger ones that are, you know, like my 200 Suzuki that takes, I think four or five quarts of oil, quite a bit there. Same thing here, I'm gonna let that, it'll, it'll drip on the motor, eventually get into my oil catch here hopefully so that one will let it drain that was just about done already my oil is pretty much done draining out of the crankcase so just give that a quick wipe down i'm going to put that drain plug back in that way it's done i don't forget about it so our lower unit we've got it's actually nice they have a, a lot of times it's just a flathead screw but this is a phillips so this is very straightforward we have an oil it's our fill level or our vent and then we have our actual drain. So what I can do first is pull that vent out. Back that out slow because you might have some pressure built up. Um, but we'll keep that fill screw there. There's a little rubber grommet that might come out. It looks like it's nice and stuck in there. That's just a seal. So we're going to leave that. And then our drain down here. So I'm going to pull this out nice and slow. The seal's coming with that one. Oop. Drop it in your oil. And actually, if you look at that, that looks really good for gear lube. Um, this is on a little private lake, no wake. So they don't run it real hard. You know, just idle speed most of the time. Um, and then they change the gear lube once a year. So it's in good shape. We're gonna let that drain. We'll pull the, the plug on the other one and let that one drain as well. Like I said, on this top, this uh, little seal here, if that comes off with your screw, that's okay. This one's just staying in place there, so I'm gonna leave it. On my drain, there is that little seal came with it. So we'll set that aside as well and let that drain for a few minutes, get all that lube out. My camera died when we we're going to the lower unit stuff. So just to cover this real quick for you, so you can see it up close. This is your drain here. This is your fill level and your vent. So what we did is we pulled both those out to drain it. We showed you that part. When we refill it, we've got other videos. I'll tag it right now of a 60 horse. It fills the same as any outboard. We're gonna pump oil from the bottom or gear loop from the bottom until it comes out and we get rid of the air bubbles. So give it a couple extra pumps till it's just fluid coming out. Then put this screw back in first, make sure your seal's good there. We're gonna put that back in first then we can remove our pump hose or our pump from this side and quickly put this screw back in to stop the flow back out. But this creates a little vacuum by putting the top screw back in first. Then we can put the bottom in. Make sure those are nice and tight. I always go back and tighten them after my hands aren't so greasy with my big flathead screwdriver. That's the lower unit lube. It's more in detail on the 60 horse Merc that we did an oil change and lube change too as well. Moving on to changing the oil filter. That's this case here. This little fuel filter will pull right off. So it's hanging here. Don't disconnect it completely, but it stays on these posts here. But you can use that to get it out of the way. Then we're gonna loosen these three bolts. Those are 10 millimeter. Uh, I got them already loosened so I can pull them the rest of the way by hand. It's just a kind of a funky little way of doing this where you gotta get in tight places not the end of the world. It is a little messy. You're still going to get some oil that comes out.
from under that plate as soon as that seal pops just a little bit there's just a little rubber uh, gasket in there but pull this all the way out we'll show you what it looks like basically what we have is those three bolts hold this cast cover on there's your little o-ring in there that helps seal everything up we'll set that aside for now and you look in here and we just have the filter and really that's it there's a spring keep that intact there and remember that this closed off side is going to face you when you put the new one in kind of a bugger to get out of here but once you get it started it comes right out and that's your filter the hole goes in first so let's grab here's the uh suzuki part number you can pause it and write that down if you need to we'll put it in the description as well but that's going to go right back in there and then we'll put the cover back on not a big deal new filter slide right in and then we'll put the housing right back on check that o-ring just make sure that it's it's in that groove where it needs to be so you get a good seal when you're putting this cover back on this little arrow is going to point down that's how you know how that's going to ride otherwise it doesn't line up correctly little oblong there and oblong there so that arrow points down we've got our filter in cover back on this is just going to clip back in there's a hose ho hose holder say that 10 times fast and then this little bracket here it's just going to slide in on each side to hold this fuel filter. Just like that. Everything's back in place. Now we can put that side cowl back on and then we will fill. Here's our dipstick up here and our engine oil fill is on the back side over here. We'll fill that, check our levels, and we're good to go. Remember, when you're putting the cowls back on, we're going to need to hook our power trim and tilt back up and then this little groove here is going to slide on top of that it snaps into place that's connected and now I can put my towel back on so if we look here 10w30 10w40 oil capacity is one liter that's not a whole lot you know so we've got our Suzuki oil 10w40 semi-synthetic we've got a little gauge on the back here for quartz um, so basically if you look at that it takes you know 1.1 quartz not a whole lot we're gonna go ahead and fill so i took out my fill cap is here that comes out you can use a funnel or if you have a quart you might be able to fill it's got a nice little lip on there it's gonna catch oil what i'm gonna do is just put some in check my dipstick we'll pull that out just like you do in your car and then add a little more and what we're going to try to do with our oil fill is we're going to try to get it somewhere between these two holes about three quarter to full those are your mark low and high three quarter to full somewhere in here would be great when we're all filled up so i put a quart of oil in we'll give it a wipe re-dip In there, I don't know if you can see it, but about halfway. So we'll add a little bit more and we'll recheck it. And another thing, once I get that near the fill line or to the top, I'm gonna give it a couple just slow pulls to turn the engine. I could unhook the safety lantern and give it a couple hard pulls too, that'd be fine. I like to move oil around. We took that filter out, oil came out. We're gonna move oil through the whole motor again, check it, make sure it's still closer to full, three quarter to full. Then we'll wrap this up. Just like that, we're ready at the full line. So I'm gonna go ahead and unhook my safety lanyard and I'm gonna give this a couple pulls and then we'll check it one more time and see if it changed where we're at with the level. We're still right on that full mark. I like that. This motor is good to go oil filter change all set and that last little step is going to be putting 
your gasket back on to the cowl. So it's got a little seam. You can put that in the front or the back. It's gonna help you square it up. That just presses back on in place. That's gonna give your motor cowl, your top hood, a nice seal all the way around. When that's all pressed back in place, we can reinstall the hood. This thing's ready to get shrink wrapped. Hope this video helped. Make sure you subscribe, like. Uh, you can always contribute to our channel with the super thanks. Uh, also at buymeacoffee.com backslash Tom's Tunes.